earlier on. Let's see if it's going to pay off, guys. TLO versus Bulls. Game number one. The map is going to be day uh, GSL Daybreak. So let's see what happens. Let's get in. Oh, let's get into the game. What the? Uh, I can't believe they. I was. I'm trying to invite McDuff. I don't know why it didn't work. Oh, I'm so sorry about that, guys. Let me message him. Actually, hang on. Oh crap! We can't even. Dear, oh dear, let me see if I can find a way to ask them to regame. One second. No, he's busy. Oh, crap. It looks like we're going to have to go into game number one. I'm really sorry about that. Never mind. We're going to be getting into game number one, guys. Sorry about that, McDuffs. I need to sort that out, and we'll definitely get you in for game number two. Spawning in the bottom left position, guys, of GSL Daybreak. We have none other than the beard itself, ladies and gentlemen. Spawning is the Red Zerg. It's going to be Liquid T-L-O. And over in the top right, as the blue Terran, able to defeat the other Terran in his group, going 2-1 up against Bobson, but T-L-O just 2 0 Bobson. Will he be able to do any better, ladies and gentlemen? It's going to be Bulls. So let's find out if these guys are going to be able to produce a better game than last time. I think they will. Bulls is a, uh, a very, very solid player, and we could see, especially in game one of him against Bobson, that his multitasking, I believe, was definitely up to scratch as well. So let's wait and see if he's able to do the same thing against TLO. Of course, one of the favorites uh, in this entire tournament and the favorite in this group, but Bulls cannot afford to be afraid right now. He needs to bring his A game and see what he can do against the very best this Zerg has to offer. And uh, hopefully everything is okay, guys, with XSplit. I saw someone in chat asking if everything is okay and what was going on. But we are into game number one of TLO versus Bulls. And everything seems to be going hunky-dory indeed. As TLO going to be grabbing that early hatchery. Bulls going to be sitting on no gas still. So that's a little bit indicative of a one rax expand. And that's exactly what he's going to be going for. Orbital Command now going down. He's up to 300 minerals. And this Marine is going to ensure that this drone will not be able to block the command center. Indeed, he does not even try to do it. And we should be sending an SCV down right now. There we go. And the command center is going to be going down. So one rack expand coming out from Bulls. And in comparison, we have the hatch burst coming out from Liquid TLO. Going to be going hatch, pool, no gas just yet. Everything looking pretty standard from both players' perspectives. Both gases now uh, very quickly being taken in the base of Bulls, actually. So that's going to be very interesting indeed. I'd like to see what he ends up using that gas for. One Rax expand into double gas usually signifies that he wants to try and catch up in terms of tech because he wasn't able to grab that gas early on. Let's wait and see. Will he be getting that factory early on? Or is he going to be going for Starport? Some sort of Banshee play? We will find out in just a moment. The command center on the low ground is now approximately 50% done. And TLO going to be starting a spine crawler at the natural. This SCV unfortunately is almost going to get surrounded by the Zerlings. Will he make it back home? I don't no, it's going to be pretty close, but I think he might have just taken a little bit too much damage there. TLL still continue to drone up in his main base and now starting to drone up at the natural as well. Going to be getting another queen for that. And TLO going to be making this reactor on the barracks, so he is just going to be going for those Hellions. He just wanted to get that factory out and that gas for the reactor as quickly as possible out of the one Rax expand so he can go for this Hellion. And we are going to see him complete... Uh, this wall off is Bulls with a third supply depot. So not electing to do that with either the barracks or the factory. Uh, or because mainly the uh, reactor is actually going to be exposed there in between these two supply depots. So he's actually electing to wall off with a third supply depot there. Really good decision there from the Terran player. Let's wait and see if this Hellion play ends up paying off. The factory is going to be floating, out, uh, anticipating this barracks lifting off. And there we go. The reacted Hellions are now going to start production in earnest as another barracks also goes down. Both players now trying to macro up as best they can. And we also have a tech lab now going down on that racks. He 
Depending on if he wants to go really quick medevacs, he might go stim first, or he might go combat shield first if he's not looking to go starport tech at some point soon. He wants to hit a timing attack with barracks and factories alone. We'll have to wait and see what he decides to choose, but now TLO deciding now is the time to grab gas. He has grabbed one gas in his main and one gas in his natural, and I actually want to talk a little bit about that after we take a quick look at the work account where TLO is slightly ahead, 32 to 27. TLO does a really awesome thing where when he takes his first two gases, he takes one extractor in the main, and he takes one extractor at the natural. Some of you might be thinking, well, hang on a second, there are two gases in the main, uh, and it's more difficult for an opponent to scout it, so why don't you just take the two in the main? What's the, what's the big deal about taking one here and one here? I'll tell you what it is. TLO uh, explained this to me once, and it's absolutely mind-blowing. You first take one gas in the main and one gas in the natural. Uh, it's true that your opponent will get to scout that you're mining a bit of gas, but we all know you're going to have to mine gas eventually anyway, and this gas is going to make his opponent and possibly think, if he scouts it, that TLO might be on 3 gas, and if he's on 3 gas, he might have been going for some really quick tech. So that's going to make his opponent really want to scout out the main as well and possibly waste a scan or something like that. The second reason is that going into the end game, if you take one gas in your main and then one gas in the natural, uh, you don't mine out evenly. If he took both these gases at the same time, he would lose gas at the same time in his main, and he would lose gas at the same time eventually when he took both at his natural at the same time. But as it currently stands, he's going to mine out gas unevenly and thus stay on a stable income for a larger proportion of the game. And that basically messes with his macro a lot less going into the late game. So that's why TLO prefers taking that one gas in the main, one gas in the natural. Very, very nice stuff coming out of him. Overlord now going to be popping into Bull's base, wanting to see everything that's going on there. He's going to be able to see the racks going down along with the add-ons. The starport also gets seen and the overlord is going to become a pile of goop pretty quickly here. And it looks like Booz are going for a pretty standard uh, bio ball with medevac support here. He has got six hellions over here at the watchtower, but the creep spread has gone so far already. Ooh, very nice. Picking off an active creep tumor there from TLO. That's going to have to mean a queen will... Uh, or actually this creep trimmer is going to be able to make up for it, but he's going to delay that creep spread as much as possible, using a scan now even to try and stop that creep from spreading until he actually gets his bio ready to push out of his base. I like that decision a lot, and now medevacs are going to be popping out of the starport for bulls here, going to be supporting that bio, and we do see Stim has actually finished researching, and combat shield is now going to be on the way as well. 1-1 one, one on the way for TLO though, and he's also got a bailing nest. Is he hiding it in his main? He is indeed to the left of that extractor, so we're going to be seeing some Zergling, Baneling aggression come out of TLO shortly, perhaps. We do see a lot of Zerglings here, so it wouldn't surprise me to see some sort of timing attack. He has an Overlord over the third, so he knows that Bulls is currently only on two base. So, he is going to know that his aggression has to be focused towards the natural, but Bulls now going to be moving out with an army of his own. He has a decent number of marines, six Hellions still from the initial assault, and a couple of medevacs going to be trying to poke into the third base. But there is creep spread here, and because there's creep spread, it's going to be a little bit difficult. A Zergling actually getting roasted there, and TLO now knows this is coming. He's going to be going for a huge flag with the Zerglings behind here, and it looks like this might be very difficult for Bulls to hold. He's waiting until... Oh, no! The Bailey's coming in from the left. The Zergling's coming in from the right. Beautiful surround! And a lot of those units do get picked up in the medevacs, so really well done to Bulls there. But TLO, with basically the picture-perfect engagement, forcing all those units in the medevacs, completely shutting down the aggression, and Bulls is going to hightail it home in these medevacs. Maybe pop by here a lot later, once he knows that these Zerglings and Banelings are not anywhere close. And uh, he's ac wow, he's actually dicing with death now, going to try and move back out towards the left-hand side. But TLO, of course, has this completely covered. It is not going to work against someone of his caliber, but we do have another drop coming out here through the bottom of the map. Will it be able to do much damage as TLO actually sending some units to take this watchtower? He could be going for a little bit of a run-by, but this wall-off is looking pretty potent, and we do actually have siege tanks with siege mode here. We have now got the drop moving out in the main. Bull's going to be able to stim in. A couple of drones are indeed going down, and the Queen is going to go down as well. That is actually huge for Bulls, doing a very, very good job of harassing TLO in the main now. And finally, the Zerglings are going to be popping in as well, and they get back into the medevac. That was a very successful drop for Bulls. Well done to him. Four drones killed there from TLO, just poking and prodding at that base. And we do actually still have two medevacs, basically with full health, and a lot more units coming up here as well. So now that he's pulling the army left, right, and center, he's going to try and uh, continuously drop left, right, left, right, and I really like this maneuver from him very, very much indeed. TLO now deciding now might indeed be the time to move out with just a little bit of aggression. The Zergly is going to be hovering with intent around the watchtower as we do see the drop get cleaned up over here 
uh, at the third base, not able to pick up quite as many units as he would have liked this time, but the number of workers killed still stays at four, so Teal's reaction time doing very well at the moment, and wow, talk about hyper-aggression here, uh, he's going to have to pick those up very quickly indeed, and oh dear, more and more units sadly getting picked up from inside those two medevacs, not going to be doing him a world of favors at all, we now have some marines going to be popping out to try and clear the base for the third here, Dewey doing very well, but... TLO has got the Zerglings ready. This Orbital Command will not be able to make it there. And even though these drops have been doing a little bit of damage, they're not going to be doing nearly enough. Let's take a look at the worker type. It's 70 to 57 in TLO's favor. It is 150 supply to 113. Bulls mackering his little heart out in this game and actually doing quite well. But uh, TLO seems to be on another level right now. He has really switched on his A game for this dream hack. Eyes are open. Doing incredibly well in this game indeed. More and more reactors getting put down on those barracks. Want to continuously pump marines out. And here we go. He's doing a quick scan. Just want to double check that these Zerglings are still there. And he wants to really push through now and try and make sure he can take this third base. And indeed he he will as the middle rocks are now going to get taken down. This is a very important thing to do on a map like Daybreak, guys, because once you get into a position where a Zerg is maxed out, you want the shortest possible reinforcement route to your opponent's base. And on Daybreak, this is exactly where that route is. Once you destroy these rocks, Liquid TLO is going to be able to push his units through into the third and Naturals of Bulls a lot faster than he otherwise would have, which is why he took down those rocks before starting his attack. 2-2 now on the way, as well as a blue flame, though, for Bulls. So he's going to really want to ramp up the aggression against these Zerglings, but the attack is coming now, as opposed to when the upgrades are finished. So many Zerglings pouring through the third here, and all the Sea Chanks are going down. Everything actually gets surrounded. I'm not actually sure if the Zerglings are going to be able to win this, Five. Yes, it looks like they will. Oh my goodness, not too many Zerglings survived, but TLO definitely got the better end of that. That was a fantastic exchange, and now he's just going to be picking away at some of these SCVs down at the 30. He's actually doing quite a good job uh, with a little bit of hold position micro. And there we go, he is going to be heading on out. 129 supply to 118. Really, really well done there by Liquid TLO. We have more reinforcements coming across the map. It looks like he is content to try and push forward with Zerglings. And here we go, even though those Hellions are blue flame, Zerglings able to get a nice surround on quite a lot of that army. Bulls being forced to pick up a lot of that in his medevacs. But as a result, TLO is going to have free reign with these Zerglings as far as aggression is concerned. A lot of these mules going down now, and a lot of the SCVs being taken out as well. And Bulls is in a little bit of a difficult position here. Uh, TLO also taking a fourth base over at the top of the map. Supplies actually 134 to 133, reasonably even, but Bulls behind by about 20 workers at the moment. So uh, TLO doing some decent damage with these runbys and the SCVs. Let's see what sort of tech he wants to go up to momentarily. We do actually have the 3-3 um, three, three upgrades coming out for the Zerglings here, so it looks like he's going to be going to Cracklings very, very soon. Adrenal Glands is not yet being upgraded. That is still an upgrade available at the spawning pool. So uh, there we go. It just starts, and it looks like a Spire is actually going down as well. So very, very heavily upgraded Zerglings here. The Ultralist Cavern is here, and the first Ultralist is going to be on the way to making itself known on the field very, very shortly indeed. And TLO, wow, lots and lots of spines just trying to protect that fourth against any sort of possible drop play. He's just going to be macroing R2, his heart's content. He is mining a little bit more than Bulls is at the moment, but crucially his upgrades are so, so good. Bulls is at 2-2 two, two as well, of course, but 3-3 three, three is going to complete for TLO long before Bulls even considers starting 3-3. Three, three. And Adrenal Glands and Kytos Plating are all going to be out. So this ground melee army from TLO is going to be absolutely huge indeed. And TLO deciding not to engage there. It's going to be a little bit difficult to squeeze in through that gap. A scan does ensure the Zerglings do head out there. And look at this highway through the middle of the map. TLO is going to be able to remax so, so quickly off the number of bases he currently has. He's now up to six bases. His main base is still mining, but only just, as is his natural. But everything else is looking like a healthy amount of minerals is going to be here. And a remax is going to be possible very, very quickly indeed. All the Zerglings, though, get roasted at the hands of this Marine Hellion army. And it looks like the Ultralists are going to have to indeed head back to the 6th base here. But TLO is going to be able to remax so much faster. Bull's now getting a little bit of a bank. He's got 2k, 1k there. And he's nearly maxed out. He's at 171 of 193 supply. And he's actually going for a quadruple drop. That's 4 medevacs worth of stuff. Going to be popping out through the bottom of the map. And TLO of course sees this. But what will he do about it is the question. 
The main army also going to be piling through. Going to put pressure on the six base here. Wow, the four medevacs drop in the main. This could actually be huge. TLO electing to leave the six base and actually go back to the main. But will the hatchery survive? It is fortunately not where the lair is. And here we go. So many ultralists pop through. If only there were a couple of infestors here as well. But never mind. The hatchery does indeed go down. And it looks like all four medevacs are going to be able to get away. So two hatcheries killed there in that attack from Bulls. Doing a very good job. But is it going to be enough? Because infestors are now out on the field. And fungal growth plus ultralisks are a really, really potent combination in this game. As I'm sure you guys know. 196 to 148 supply. And plummeting for Bulls here. He needs to find a way to hold these ultralisks at his base but so many ultras are now out on the field there are 12 ultralisks and counting we have some corruptors a greater spy is already here and uh we might even be seeing broodlords complimenting this army if this push does not win for tlo 12 ultralisks are actually walking straight past the tank like they don't care that is <laughs> incredible there and tlo is going to be able to walk all over this space. The question is whether Bulls will be able to hold at his natural excellent fungal growth on those Marines. And it looks like Bulls was massing the majority of his army at this third, which means that there's going to be a lot less defense at the natural. This base is about to go down. Let's take a look what he has in the natural. Just a couple of Marines and a bunker, I'm afraid, so a lot less resistance than he had over at the third. The planetary goes down. The orbital is about to go down as well, and I'm afraid this is going to be a little bit of a victory march for TLO. It looks like he is going to be getting a 1-0 advantage over Bulls in this game number one. I believe this is group number 24 of the DreamHack ISO Open, Liquid TLO poised to win this game against Bulls, and he's actually taking this forward base as well, basically Bulls equivalent of his fourth or fifth. He's now going to be heading into the natural. Nice choke there, but really good fungals on a lot of those Marines. They're doing tremendous DPS against these Ultras, and TLO, TLO's actually heading back there. He doesn't have enough Infestors. He needs a couple more fungals to make that work really, really well indeed, but he's already back up to 184 supply, and Bulls is at 110, so I'm afraid his time in the world is currently numbered. Let's see what he decides to do next, though. If I were TLO, I would just be going infestors, 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 go back into this choke point and fungal everything behind it. That's really what needs to be done so that these ultras can get the maximum surface area. He also has a couple of banelings, which actually will work very well against that sort of clumped up units. But uh, I think he's going to be waiting for a couple more as well. Let's wait and see. Oh, wow. He's going to be spelling TLO in spine crawlers out in the middle of the map. Oops, a little bit misplaced there. <laughs> Oh my goodness, TLO showing us the stuff here today. Got three spine crawlers here. No, he's going to cancel them. Where is the O going? We have the T and the L. There we go. <laughs> A little bit of showmanship for the fans, guys. If you came to this stream to watch Liquid TLO, you're getting a little bit of fan service from the man himself here. T-L-O, spelt out in spine crawlers. Look at it on the mini-map. This is actually beautiful. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. We're still missing one spine crawler, though, TLO. You can do better than that. Come on, let's get that drone up there. As uh, TLO completely shuts down the drop at the forward base here. There you can see a TLO on the minimap. A little bit of a gap on the O, but actually he rectifies that as well. Because he is the perfectionist we all know and love. Ultralist now and Bailing to be able to clean up the rest of the drops. And Bulls is trying so hard for counterplay, but unable to give a TLO on the minimap. Ladies and gentlemen, spelt out in spine crawlers. He takes game number one against Bulls. Very well played to TLO. What an Incredible game, really showing us what he was made of there. Guys, I am Jarazar. We'll be back with game number two of TLO against Bulls right after these commercial breaks. <laughs>